Hey, what's up guys? TBL here, coming back with some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 gameplay. I was feeling retro this weekend, so I decided to jump on Black Ops 2. We're getting into a domination match here on Express. Not exactly my favorite stage here. I'm not exactly a big fan of Express, but uh, you know what? It's a close quarters combat kind of stage, and uh, I, I generally have fun with those. Now, I uh, feel like I should say I'm sorry I haven't posted a video for the past two weeks. I've been a little bit busy with, uh, oh man, all kinds of things going on in life. But uh, I've got some free time this weekend, so I'm planning on uh, posting a couple videos. I still have to get that uh, character voiceover demo up for you guys, which is a pretty easy thing. I've already got the demo made, of course. I just need to make a quick video for it. I'll probably have that done later on today. Now, for this match, I am rocking the AN-94 suppressed with an adjustable stock so I can uh, bob and weave a little bit better. I got that in gold, and whoa, hello. There's a uh, first customer. Thank you very much. And I gotta tell you, it is so weird going back to Black Ops 2 after playing Ghost for so long. Still trying to get the hang of it. Now, I wanted to take a quick minute to uh, say something I feel is important. I love playing with subscribers. I mean, I'm a gamer just like you guys. So I'm always looking for people to play with. And I was contacted uh, this week by one of my subscribers, asked me to get on a game and play a couple of matches with her. Had a really fun time. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to YouTube user Eliza Sharp. She uh, hit me up on Twitter earlier this week, asked me to get on Ghost, and so I did. And we had a couple of matches together. I didn't do particularly well, but I had a ton of fun just playing the game, chatting with her, and uh, having, a, having a good round of games with the people who were in the room. And I love that kind of stuff. I mean, like I said before, I'm a gamer at heart, and I'm pretty much looking for people to play with. So if uh, you don't have me added on the Wii U, the Nintendo does have kind of a small friend list. I think you can only have about 100 people, so it fills up pretty quickly. But feel free to invite me to a game or add me on anything, because I'm looking for people to play with. But I definitely wanted to give props to uh, Eliza for hitting me up and getting me on Ghosts on the Wii U. I'll have a link to her channel in the description. You guys should definitely check her out. She uh, told me she's going to start posting videos uh, pretty soon. I'm trying to get her up on that, but definitely give her a subscribe. And once again, thanks for playing, Eliza. Alright, so in other gaming news, my home forum, Nintendo World, is holding our Farewell Wii Tournament. Now, I talked about this a little bit on some previous videos, but basically since the Wii U's online services are going to be going down next month, we are holding uh, farewell tournaments for some of the most popular Wii games. Games like Super Smash Bros. Brawl and uh, Mario Kart Wii. We're trying to get as many people as we can to sign up and uh, just have fun playing those games before they go down. Now, the tournaments are open enrollment, and uh, one of them has already started. We're going to be holding them every weekend until the Wii servers go down. This is the first weekend, but don't worry, you're really not missing too, too much. I think uh, we're having the Brawl tournament today, Saturday, and then the Mario Kart tournament after that, and then next week we're going to be holding the second round of tournaments, which you can still join in on that round if you didn't, if you weren't in the first round, and so on and so forth until the Wii servers go down. So definitely make sure you check that out if you're interested. If you want to get in some Mario Kart fun and some uh, Super Smash Bros all fun before those games get taken offline definitely check it out as always i'll have a link to uh, the forum in the description looking forward to seeing you guys there make sure you tell them the black link sent you anyways tapping back into this match right here doing pretty good our team's about 61 to 33 so uh, we're keeping them we're keeping a steady lead here we've got a couple of higher level people on the other team who uh, are really kind of not paying attention to taking domination points i guess they're just trying to build kills and where did he go whoa okay so there's two of them out here oh made a fatal mistake right there i tried to throw a second c4 in nope yep i got blown up let that be a lesson guys always check your ammo but anyway, we're doing pretty good. I've got a different kind of kill streak set up for this uh, for this match. I'm running Stealth Chopper into Orbital VSAT into uh, EMP Burst. I think it's a pretty interesting kill streak setup because uh, you basically get all three of them at the same time. The three of them are uh, really, really close in terms of score requirement. I think like 1,100 for the... Uh, hey, hello, how you doing? 1,100 for the uh, Stealth Chopper, 1,200 for the Orbital VSAT, and 1,300 for the uh, EMP. Now, again, I like that setup because you get it all at once, which makes it really easy to get in a game like Domination. But because, also, it works really well. It's got a little bit of an offensive nature to it with the uh, Stealth Chopper, and see if we get anything. Nope. But uh, the Stealth Chopper will get you a couple of kills, and then the rest is pretty much all support. Orbital VSAT being the best kill streak in this game, in my opinion. Uh, transitions right into uh, the EMP. Orbital VSAT, of course, being, you know, the uh, advanced UAV of this game. Allows you to see enemies in real time on the map, whether they've got a ghost on or not. 
it's super helpful and uh, it builds up a ton of points when your friends start getting kills while it's up and that transitions right into EMP. Shutting down all enemy equipment, you know, their kill streaks, their map, their uh, reticles. It's just a super, super cool setup that really works out well, especially in uh, objective-based game modes like this. Speaking of which, we're coming on to the end of uh, round one here. We're about 110 to 50. And I think somebody just took Alpha. Yep, let's see where they are. Oh, hello. All right, and that'll push me almost up to uh, my stealth chopper. That's the end of round one, and uh, <laughs> somebody doesn't sound too happy. We've got ourselves a pretty solid lead, so hopefully around the start of round two, I'll be able to pick up my uh, stealth chopper and transition that into my remaining kill streaks. But hey, we'll see. My score is currently sitting at 14 and 6, I believe. There right, we go, round two starting up, and let's dive right on in. This is one thing that uh, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised about when I came back to Black Ops 2. That it's something I wish Ghost would have done, but that's uh, splitting domination into two separate rounds. You know, in this, I think it's the only Call of Duty that actually does this, but you start a round on one side, and then you play for half the match, and then that round ends, and you start your next round over. And let's see if we can get this guy. That should boost me up to my... Yep, got me my stealth chopper. But I think that's a really great idea for... Hold on, is he still alive? Yep. We got a red name. <laughs> and just like that, we've got our orbital VSAT, our stealth chopper, and we'll have that EMP right now. Oh, good timing, too. But the point being, I really like that it's split between two rounds because that way you can't get base raped all match long. I mean, I know there are stages, but that really is a problem here on Black Ops 2 on like hijacked and whatnot. But uh, forcing a round end and uh, resetting spawns, oh, he didn't like being killed, did he? But uh, <laughs> being able to switch sides in the battlefield, I think it's a good change of pace. I really like that system. So another bit of uh, Wii U sort of uh, topics that I wanted to talk to you guys about is uh, upcoming games and currently released games on the system. I know I've said multiple times that I can't wait for Mario. What in the world was that garbage? <laughs> All right, that's cool. It's all right. We're still uh, we're still pretty far in the lead, but I cannot wait for Mario Kart Wii U. Mario Kart 8 is coming out next month, and it is probably going to be something that I'm going to be playing every single day. And you know, judging from the reactions and comments and uh, messages I've gotten from other people, we're going to be having a lot of uh, pretty much every Wii U owner I know is probably going to be getting Mario Kart, which is good because I'm going to be looking for people to play with. But beyond that, what do we really have on the Wii U to do? Uh, Mario Kart and Smash Bros. are the only really big Wii U games that I can think of that are coming out this year, and Smash Bros. we're not getting until sometime in the winter. But of course, you might be surprised to know that there are a couple of other things to do on the system right now. First and foremost being the blossoming virtual console library that's building up. Now, as I'm sure most of you guys know, Nintendo has been releasing GBA games on the Wii U's virtual console pretty much one or two a week. Just this week alone, we got Super Mario Bros. 3, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, and Golden Sun. I don't know about you, but those are some heavy hitters right there. I know personally, Golden Sun is one of my favorite games of all time. I used to rock that RPG from dusk till dawn. You know, I had that one, I had The Lost Age, which was the sequel on the GBA, and then I got, uh, and then I got the third one on the DS. So I'm a pretty big Golden Sun fan, still hoping for a fourth one to tie up the loose ends. Because there were a lot, total cliffhanger endings in all of them. And I simply couldn't resist buying this on the, uh, the Wii U Virtual Console. I'm a little bummed that it didn't come out on the 3DS Virtual Console so I can, you know, take it on the go wherever I, wherever I go. Because I take my 3DS everywhere. But I am super psyched that it's out on the Wii U. I'm getting it, or rather I've already gotten it. And I might even do a, uh, I might even do a Let's Play. It's kind of a long game, but you know what? I love Golden Sun so much, I really wouldn't mind doing a Let's Play of that whole RPG. But anyway, that joins the other lineup of available Game Boy Advance games, those being uh, Advance Wars, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Metroid Fusion, which is one of the best games of all time, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, which is another one of the best games of all time, in my opinion, of course, and uh, I believe WarioWare Inc., Mega Micro Games, which is, <laughs> if you've never played a WarioWare game, they're hilarious, you should definitely check them out. So anyway, all of those are out. I'm definitely going to be spending a lot of time on Golden Sun, and I'd like to know what you guys' thoughts are on the Virtual Console. What games would you like to see? What games are already on there that you love? 
and uh, what systems would you love to have on the Virtual Console? I'm really looking forward to the day where we get uh, N64 games and like GameCube games on the Virtual Console. It's already been proven through uh, through certain homebrew things that the Wii U can uh, emulate GameCube games perfectly. And hello, don't stand together. <laughs> but I'm looking for the day. I'm really looking forward to the day when Nintendo officially supports it. I mean, could you imagine playing like a game like Super Smash Bros. Melee with the Wii U Pro Controller or Super Smash Bros. 64 or any of those old classics? The future is bright, man. But anyway, let me know what you guys think uh, about the Virtual Console and what you might be looking forward to in the comment section below. Turning our attention back to the match here, we're just about done. The score is 161 to 155, so they're trying to stage a comeback, but uh, I'm going to keep sneaking around, seeing if I can... Yep, there we go, take A. I'm fairly certain we've got this one in the bag, but you know what, I like to play it safe. We've got C, but I'm going to go ahead and take A and see if we can hold these points. As you can see, there's about 15 seconds left on the clock, and it's 166 to 162. That's definitely enough time for them to catch up if they held all the domination points. But we've got ourselves a three-point lead, and I'm fairly certain... Let me go check B. Fairly certain we've got the... Whoa! Whole team sitting together, and... Boom! There we go. 169 to 168. Talk about a clutch ending. And uh, listen to those mics. They do not sound too happy with this, but here we go. I got the final kill. Tagged all of them. I can't believe how many shots it takes to kill people in Black Ops 2. It's a real shell shock going from Ghost where it takes like three shots to kill to Black Ops 2 where it takes like five to six. But you know what? We took that match 169 to 168. It does not get any closer than that. Our final score tallied up to 32 kills with 17 deaths, 7 captures, and 5 defends. We got over 5,000 points that round. Not bad at all. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Again, I wanted to give a shout out to Eliza Sharp. Keep watching and keep playing. And definitely feel free to hit me up for games anytime. You guys can check her channel out in the description below. Well, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. If you guys like what you see and you like what you hear, be sure to check out my channel where I've got a ton more videos and a ton more coming. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. As always, I am the Black Link. You guys stay frosty.